five months pregnant and she's just breaking into cars because she doesn't have, she hasn't eaten in two days besides a slice of pizza and then she was looking for change to buy food. The victim ended up not wanting to prosecute, but then we still, like, we have nothing. I had a bus pass to give her, but I don't have any food. We still, like, released her hungry. All we did was drive her to the bus stop with a bus pass. And then right after that, the next day, we had um, a burglary where the guy ran from the victims that found him, and then he ended up circling back, so we easily detained him, but then he's sitting there breathing hard. So he was asking for water. I don't have water to give you. Now he's like in cuffs in the back of my car where like his life is in my hands, right? Now I'm responsible for him. So like, I wish I had some water to give him. I'm gonna uphold the law, but we can do it with kindness. Yeah, so each car has a sliding drawer and then we put it in the bottom because that's where it would fit. We got water and then non-perishable food. So we got some nuts, some granola bars, and some fruit snacks, which this could also be used if like a child's in a collision and you need to hang out with the kid for a little bit. You can maybe ask their parents if they can have some fruit snacks. Like of course our work makes us feel things inside, right? Or at least me. I want to help people, which can count for like the victims of the crime, but also those committing the crime. They're doing it for a reason. And so if I can at least provide them with something to go away with, then hopefully I'm at least making them feel better right now. And maybe they'll remember, oh, that officer cared enough to, to give me a little snack when I'm starving or give me some water when I'm breathing super hard in handcuffs in the back of a police car. So it's just part of that compassion piece. Mm -hmm.